I think there's the short term as the, the long term. Our economic uh, research suggests the dollar's still overvalued, maybe by another 10 or 12 percent. So that's like a two or three year target. Um, and then I think the shorter term is we have maximum US dollar shorts in the market, which would tell you that the weakness that we've seen at some point, there may be the ability to take profits from a market perspective. But also with the Fed raising rates, with the Trump uh, tax plan being taken very positively and with, I would say, quite a lot of ebullience in the US asset markets, you would assume the Fed uh, definitively is raising rates and the yield interest rate differential should therefore benefit the dollar. So I think people are quite surprised that we haven't seen a bit of a rally since the weakness of 2017 and I would still expect to see the dollar rally at some point. Well that's exactly the point, right? And it's then we would then, then, then no I think you back. sell it again because this time you're going to go to the uh, but I do think also technically I mean I'm I'm not always a chartist but I think breaking 90 on the DXY was quite important for the mm. for the people who use the charts because I think the next level is 85. So we could be in this in this area where it should have a rally but maybe it, it doesn't and then I think the fundamentals reassert themselves and the dollar goes down. So we were looking at some of the equity market moves already for this year. I mean many of analyst targets for 2018 have already been reached in the first yes. month of the year. Yes. S&P is up almost 8% or so uh, and, and, and that's paired with the weakness in dollars. So I just wonder I mean are you expecting this momentum to continue? If we continue like this, I mean, it will be up, what, 100 percent? Yes, I don't think we should be analyzing January's <laughs> returns. Um, I, I think what it is, I think that the, the momentum we saw at the end of last year has really continued. And it's now, I think, dependent on corporate earnings. So as, mm -hmm. you, as you said in your intro, this week we've got Apple and a mm -hmm. few of the tech uh, stocks. Of the, of the tech stocks. Mm -hmm. and, and we need to see the balance of wage, you know, wage rises, share buybacks and dividends, or maybe some more M&A. But it does feel like the market is now pricing in quite a lot of good news. How much of the performance in equities this year do you think is contingent on the tech stock's performance? Last year, about 20% of S&P returns came from the, the tech sector. Are you expecting it to have that much of an impact for 2018 as well? Well, again, I think it comes back to valuations. I mean, we, we would say a lot of the tech stocks and actually the tech stocks in Asia are now priced for quite a lot of good, good news. And so I think it, it, at the moment, as Intel showed, that, that, that good news is coming. But one can't, I think, assume everything that happened in 2017 happens again. We had no Trump and trade, whereas we are mm -hmm. beginning to see some signs of Trump and trade. Mm -hmm. um, I think we are expecting to see politics uh, change a few things. We will, unfortunately, on this program, be spending a lot more time on the implications of Brexit as this year, yep. this year goes through, even if it's only from the City of London's. Uh, perspective. And so I think a lot of the, the good things that didn't happen in 2017, we're going to have to navigate them a bit more in 2018. And that's why we think you need to be active. It isn't just going to be a rising tide with no events that can, can shape your, your portfolio. The fact that uh, turnover, especially in the US market, seems to be dominated by ETFs and passive strategies, yeah. does that make the market inherently that much more risky? So when the turn does come, it's going to be quite a violent one. I think yes, although I'd calibrate that. I think at the moment, money flowing into a lot of in ETFs, including the indexed ETFs, is clearly valuation incentive. You're just buying whatever's you know, at, at that level. So we, we think that, that is, it's consistent with putting risk on, but it's not necessarily consistent with getting the type of returns you're paying at these valuations. But what I think the underlying story will be focused on this year is as the Fed raises rates, or even as the Fed has raised rates, at some point this will change the, the leverage inside the market. What we've seen is low volatility in bond markets, low volatility in equity markets, it's allowed risk parity structures and those type of things to take more and more risk on both sides. Mm -hmm. Just the right raising of rates I think at some point will start to call into question the value at risk calculations and so we could see risk off not because of any Trump event or any other economic event but simply because the market has, so, has, has gone too long on both sides. Very, very quickly at some point then in the cycle a higher rates environment is going to start to bite and you can boil the frog for maybe a period of time before he starts to croak. When is that tipping point going to come? Well, it feels, feels I mean, the, if you go back in the cycles, if you go back two or three years ago ahead, sorry, 10 years ago, the, at the, um, we had a peak in US rates of 3% and then we had the global financial crisis. You go back uh, to the uh, TMT, we had a peak in uh, US rates at 5.5% and then everything rolled over. For all you and I know, 2% is already the peak. We, we're already there and then we're just waiting for the, for, for the tipping point to, to un, uh, un, unravel. Uh, unravel. So I, I, we've solved a debt crisis with more debt. 
and therefore our sensitivity even here in the UK to the price of interest rates is going to be crucial to our ability to fund our houses or to continue our, our lifestyle.